everybody and welcome to another episode of Cruising Israel. I'm your host Natalie. I'm Max. I don't know about you Max, but I'm having such a great time on the show with you. I mean, we go to so many different cities, we see so many different things, we meet a lot of new people, new faces all the time. It's true, so many places. Yeah, but there's always one city that we keep going back to. Every other week we keep going back to that city. There's lots of festivals and restaurants and museums and, you know, events, lots of things to do there, and that's the city of Jerusalem. Oh yeah, well it is the capital of Israel, it is where our parliament meets, and there's so much to do there, because like you said, there's thousands of years of history, and also a lot of new stuff going on as well. Exactly, so, where the old meets the new, and I figure we should reminisce on those times, we should look back at our old clips of the different places we visited. We've been to a lot of places in Jerusalem, let's, let's take a look at some of the clips. visiting Israel from another part of the world is sure to encounter plant species that they've never seen before. So where do Israelis go when they want to see some exotic species of plants? Jerusalem's Botanical Gardens. So let's head inside and see what it's all about. The Botanical Gardens features the largest selection of plant life in Israel, boasting 6,000 species, and is known to dazzle visitors with its unique and rare varieties. And it's all located in one serene park. Here on the tables you can see the different plants that we're growing. Eventually the gardeners will take them and plant them in the garden. 90% of the lush greenery and plants, stretching out over these 30 acres, started from seeds cultivated by a guy named Michael Avishai on behalf of the botanical garden. Michael Avishai is now 83 years old and he still, you can see him still like climbing trees, collecting the seeds and going in the, the water to uh, pollinate this like special water plant. So it's pretty awesome. I bet it's really rewarding for him to walk around here and see what he created, what yeah, he brought to life. Amazing, yeah. Actually, the garden is divided into six different sections, represent the geographical areas uh, the plants are originated from. At the Botanical Garden, plants which are native to the Mediterranean area, Asia, America, Europe, and Southern Africa are all cultivated right here in Jerusalem. So I understand that there's a lot of groups that come here, kids with special needs or kids of all ages. We do have a lot of special needs groups who come over. We do also have special needs groups who are in the garden doing some work. They're actually using the garden as a therapy. I think gardening is one of the most therapeutic activities yes. someone could do. <laughs> Absolutely. It's very relaxing, you're seeing something come to life. The Botanical Gardens welcomes volunteers from all parts of the world to learn about the wonderful world of plant cultivation and to participate in a program that is helping to turn Jerusalem green. farm outside of Jerusalem is home to a variety of animals and teaches visitors the importance of environmental preservation. But not only that, there's a special meaning behind its name and today we're going to find out all about it. Eyal's farm is situated in Kibbutz Ramat Rachel, overlooking magnificent views of Jerusalem and even the surrounding cities off in the distance. So cute! Tasty, huh? At Chavat Eyal, which translates to Eyal's farm, the main goal is to teach visitors not only about respecting animals, but respecting the environment as well. Visitors learn all about eco-friendly methods of building and how to live an organic and sustainable lifestyle. In the kibbutz, all the leftover food from the preschools will end up over here and is used as compost. Also, all the water gets reused over here. So there's a, there's a lot of importance on recycling. I mean, all the, all the kibbutz knows that if you have a plastic water bottle or something, this is where it goes, because here, this is where everyone, you recycle everything as much as possible. The idea didn't come out of nowhere. The farm was created as a memorial to Eyal Yoel, a young kibbutz member who died a hero. But there's a very emotional story behind how this farm came to be. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about it? Eyal uh, was killed uh, on a combat while he was a soldier uh, on the IDF. So you're carrying on Eyal's name and everything Eyal believed in by opening up this farm. Yeah, exactly. When we stay here, we can feel his spirit. 
you know, because it's, it's everywhere. In the midst of the big city of Jerusalem, we found an oasis with lush greenery, natural wildlife, and a herd of gazelles roaming freely here at Gazelle Valley Park. The Urban Wildlife Park invites visitors from all around the country to enjoy the nature that has made its way to the busy city of Jerusalem. It aims to preserve the flora and fauna of Jerusalem by restoring the herd and hopefully returning them from captivity to the wild. Israel has been referred to as Eretz Hatzvi, the land, the land of, of the gazelles. gazelles. Yes. So this means they've been living here for thousands of years. They've definitely been here for at least 3,000 years mm -hmm. and probably much more than that. The population of Israel's gazelles decreased by 70% over the past decade due to construction, paving roads and other human activity. Only several hundred of them remains in Jerusalem. So this park is sort of like a safe haven for these 20, yeah. 25 gazelles. Yeah. The Society for the Protection of Nature in Israel played an imperative role in the Gazelle Valley Park and in preventing the development plan that would have led to major consequences in Jerusalem's ecosystem. We started bringing here um, gazelles from, that got run over, wild gazelles that got, let's say, run over by a car, got some medical care and got released here. Well, let's go see if we can catch some gazelles. On camera. On camera. Is. So, uh, my guess is that maybe we'll find some gazelles by the fig tree down there. Okay. So, let's the go best. see. Yeah. Now, as you said, um, these are very alert creatures. Yeah. So. They, they move around in couples, and there is a female. Oh, there's another one. She's eating whatever brush she found. They're really enjoying life here. The Israeli gazelle has a very keen sense of sight, hearing, and smell. The whole idea is to preserve the unique nature of the area of Jerusalem. In Israel, ecosystems are very small and therefore very sensitive to building. the only music square in downtown Jerusalem where people can enjoy live music and all different styles of music every single day. If you'll stand here at night, you'll see the plaza full of people eating and listening to live music and hopefully getting a bit closer one to each other and that's the goal behind all of this project. The music square features galleries, cafes and an awesome music museum where we'll go on a historical and musical journey. The museum is divided in several different exhibition spaces. Um, do you organize them in any particular way? So, seven rooms in the museum. Each room represents a different region around the world according to the Jewish story. This is the Karnai. A Karnai comes from Bukhara. You use it like this. So anybody's allowed to just take the instrument and start playing it? It can be a very boring or if we will only explain. Use it. Okay, it gives, it? yes, of course. <sighs> that was a fail. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. As we toured around the museum, we heard lots of new sounds. After learning about all the instruments in the museum, it really worked up my appetite, but luckily here at the Music Square, we could choose from not one, but six restaurants. I think we'll go for restaurant Kinol Bakikal, which means violin at the square. This high-end grill bar is the latest addition to a growing list of elegant kosher restaurants in Jerusalem. The restaurant specializes in tasteful fusion meat dishes, which happens to be every carnivore's dream. The hamburger is the best hamburger I've ever had. The texture is good, the taste is good, it's hot. What we're doing here is uh, lots of meat on the grill. We're doing Texan-style barbecue. 
The food that we know and love is made with the highest of quality ingredients, featuring a variety of meats smoked overnight in a special charcoal oven called the Jasper. So for anyone who loves meat, restaurant Kinor Bakikar is like music to your ears. In the heart of historic Jerusalem, a significant piece of history has come back to life with a new purpose, the first station. It seems like Israelis are experts in taking something old and repurposing it into something new. And in a country with so much history, it's no surprise that there are examples like this everywhere you turn. The first station served as a railway that was once the main public transit between Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And today it has become a rich cultural center that combines leisure and lifestyle. On any given day, you'll find festivals, galleries, exhibits, and fun for the whole family. The venue also helps preserve the history and tradition of its roots. Now, this train station was active for about a century, from the late 1800s to the, to the late 1900s. Um, who actually built it? The first station was basically the first train station to Jerusalem. It was built in, in 1892 by the Ottoman Empire. The station was in operation through the time of the British Empire until Israeli independence and into statehood. Now we all know Jerusalem is home to some of the finest restaurants. Some are even housed in buildings that date back to a bygone era. Today we're here at restaurant Adom where the chef incorporates local produce to create international cuisine. Alongside many cafes, boutiques and shops lies a restaurant which is both upscale and yet a simple eatery. This restaurant has been around for quite some time, right? Yeah, 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. The ingredients is local. The food is uh, international. We make also seafood and things about interpretation of Israel and Jerusalem. So we use a lot of uh, eggplant, coriander. We want to try what all the customers go crazy for, okay? okay. So what are you going to make for us today? Uh, I'm going to make masaba. What's really popular in Israeli cuisine is mixing the ingredients, mixing everything together, the yogurt sauce, the dips, all of the ingredients in one bite. Jerusalem has been the site of legendary battles throughout the ages. Today we're here at Ammunition Hill to learn about the brave men who lost their lives in the liberation of Jerusalem. Here visitors get to not only learn about the sacrifices of the brave Israeli paratroopers, but their own courage gets put to the test. Wow, it's so cool. You could see a real bunker from the war in 1967. This is a site where a very historic and significant battle took place, right? Yes, 50 years ago. Uh, against uh, the toughest warriors of the Jordanian front collided our paratroopers. They were all reservists. They were all civilians two weeks before. It's the carpenters, the grocery shop owners, the fathers, yeah. the proud fathers like my father was. He was 32, he was a carpenter. He was recruited two weeks before. Alon was just a baby when his father got recruited into the army. Little did he know that was the very last time Alon's father would see him again. Today's SMSs are the postcards they used to send. And he wrote to me a postcard. Alon Chik, I could not say anything. We have to go to war. Be a man and take care of your mother. And to my mother, he wrote in the same postcard, Maydele, be brave. We come back alive and victorious. We received this postcard four days after he died. So this was the last farewell for my father. He was died practically 56 meters from the place I'm working on a daily basis. Oh my goodness. Today the place serves as a museum and shares the courageous stories to many groups that visit of one of the most important battles in Israeli history. How does the thrilling activities here, the ropes course and the zip lining, how does that connect to the, the history of the battle? It's not only about death and sacrifice. When they talk about bravery and camaraderie in the trenches, we're using zip line and we're using a rope course so that they will understand what we are talking about. The exhilarating ropes course utilizes both your physical and mental abilities and is fun for pretty much any adventure. Great, you get to the top, okay. Ah! Whoa! Okay, Whoa. take your head back. All right. Let's reach. Ah! Oh my god! Yay! As a kid! Woo! 
This place really offers a one-of-a-kind experience. I mean, when you're dangling off a high tower right up here and seeing the old city in front of you, I mean, there's nothing else like it. So thank you so much. We had an amazing, amazing time. In a very tranquil area not far from Jerusalem lies a gallery which sets the perfect setting for letting out your artistic creativity. For almost three decades, Kakadu Art Gallery has been selling pieces of art and offering workshops to create one-of-a-kind handmade art pieces, all led by Kakadu artist Reut Shachar. And it's all about art that makes functions. So down here in Reut's studio, you can actually see the creative process take place. Let's check it out. Each product that we are doing, made by hand, with our colors that we are making in our laboratories. At Kakadu, you can create your own masterpiece side by side with the artist, or purchase from a wide variety of wooden art pieces on display at the gallery. Around the gallery, you'll find everything from whimsical furnitures to color vases, perfect for adding some color to your home, and even some patented products such as her wooden carpets. It's a pattern that we got uh, lots of rewards for. I needed a floor mat near the sink, not out of fabric because this ruined very quickly. The wood is covered with a very strong lacquer that lasts for years to come. I'm no expert at handcrafting, but I thought I'd give it a try anyway. After all, Raoul did say everyone that walks in Kakadu is an artist. We have on the table of the workshop eight different colors. We work with sponges, not with brushes, because the fibers of the wood. You can also work with stencil and with markers. The artistic environment made it easy to immerse yourself in the creative process. Are you proud? It's so beautiful because of your final touches. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'm going to hang it. I know uh, just where to hang it. It'll add a splash yes. of color to my wall. We're now here in the historical city of Jerusalem with Chef Moshe Basson, who's going to teach us all about the very popular vegetable, the Jerusalem artichoke, which has even reached international notoriety. Let's try to dig it because it's growing in my garden, underground. Wow, right outside the restaurant. As fresh as can be. <laughs> so this is the Jerusalem artichoke? Exactly. Okay, now we're gonna start seeing what we could do with these artichokes in the kitchen of the restaurant. You're going to be my sous chef, I think? Sure, first time for everything. <laughs> okay, so an artichoke that came straight from the ground. What's the first step? Peel it. First step, you peel it. And it's really easy to peel, washing it. The Jerusalem artichoke is pretty versatile as it can be roasted, fried, boiled, mashed, or sauteed and works well with almost any spice. I'm sauteing it with uh, onion and olive oil, of course. Woo! Look at that fire! Yeah. Chef Moshe has a passion for biblical culture and includes ancient spices and herbs that is mentioned in the Bible into his cuisine. This was the brush of uh, Moses, the Israelites, when they're leaving Egypt. They're marking the door with uh, a bunch of uh, hyssop. Cheers to the Jerusalem Artichoke. The Jerusalem Artichoke Festival in Yerushalayim. The Jerusalem Artichoke Festival is a newfound tradition with a collaboration between dozens of restaurants. This is the famous red lentil soup from the story of Jacob and Isab in the Bible. Chef Moshe perfected the use of the Jerusalem artichoke and it became a popular one among the locals. He made sure to include it in the various dishes in a form of cream, in a soup, or as a side dish. I left feeling as satisfied as ever and with a whole new perspective on this unique vegetable. Thanks so much. Cheers. Hi. Hi. Today we're here in Jerusalem, in the heart of the German colony, which dates back to the mid-1800s. The German Templar Society settled in Jerusalem with the goal to advance the rebuilding of the temple and to promote the second coming of Christ. 
They desired to maintain a way of life that observed religion and the principles of Christianity. Now this is a bed and breakfast really worth checking out. You also have the cozy boutique suites and you also could have that historic experience. Am I right? Yes, exactly. That's the type of experience we are trying to provide. How did you bring this historical gem into modern days? Well, this was uh, my family's house for more than 60 years. My grandmother lived here since 1951 um, and we decided to renovate it a few years ago. We worked very hard to maintain all the original features of the house, the tiles and the ceilings and the doors and the windows and the handles and everything we could. So your grandmother moved into this house in the 1950s, but I know that the structure dates back many, many years before that. So the house was built around in the 1890s by the Templar shoemaker by the name of Christian Messerle. We feel that in a way the house tells the history of, or the recent history of Jerusalem. This was the original German colony of Jerusalem, located a bit to the south of what was the city at the time, and on the way to Bethlehem and to Hebron. And today, this is the center of Jerusalem. All right, Alon, let's head inside and check out the suites. All four suites have a bedroom and a living room with a sofa bed. Oh, you definitely don't see ceilings like this anymore. Well, this originally used to be a window, was turned into a bookshelf maybe 60 or 70 years ago. Thanks for watching End Time Signs Updates. If you like video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. May God bless you and we look forward to seeing you back again for our next video.